FM. I'm Brady, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Um, as we are visited by Ray Spoon and Respectful Child, uh, non-binary, <laughs> non-binary artists of incredible fortitude, talent, and vision. They are more than halfway through a tour together across Canada after Ray dropped Bodies of Water earlier this month, an album that speaks on ranging but interrelated topics of control of water to control of gender. You can also tune in on YouTube to CFRU 93.3 FM to check out some live visuals along with the music. So, without further ado, here is Respectful Child and Ray Spoon. Friday night in my town, the drummer. still clap their hands if you think there's still a question look into the crowd which person has lost nothing which one's not you so much all right well welcome everyone thanks so much for coming hear me all right in there yeah we can hear you oh yay okay so how are you both feeling did you get lots of sleep <laughs> we got some sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's good so you're like past the halfway mark on your month and a bit tour how does that feel actually it feels really good yeah we drove so far but it doesn't feel like i'm exhausted or burned out yet then oh good i still like ray <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think they still like it's me super it's true important. <laughs> yeah. yeah so it was like a pretty long drive but it's nice to be over here on the side of canada mm-hmm. yeah nice to have you certainly 
Um, so do you both kind of like share driving duties or like how does how does kind of like the logistics of the trip work? Yeah, yeah uh, we're both new drivers, but I'm a newer driver. So <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I got my license like last June. So but I started driving a lot as soon as I got it. So yeah, we've been doing half and half, I'd say. I think so. Ray's nice. been writing grants in the back or in the like passenger seat <laughs> while I or our other sound tech who's not here with us right now gray have been driving so we all yeah we all have a good rotation going on yeah. <laughs> oh nice that's super important yeah, yeah. um so h- what's that experience like being a new driver <laughs> um I only ask because uh uh I'm a p- epileptic so I actually uh, had my license taken away and I'm going to get my license back um Ooh. but super nervous yeah it's a lot less scary once you're doing it like i remember as we were coming over i was like i can't drive on the 401 and then i got on the 401 and i was like this is fun <laughs> so like now i'm thinking i can't drive in montreal but it's like <laughs> you just end up it's just practice so yeah <laughs> we're definitely getting our practice in just okay. try to keep calm and victoria I where i live is not the same kind of driving like people go under the speed limit there <laughs> so oh, yeah, yeah so i'm learning stuff <laughs> I've okay. sped up since we left, I think. Like, yeah. I learned to speed a little. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, would you care to divulge at all uh, what that experience was like as a, like a, as a non-binary person going to get your license? Yeah, I mean, I think throughout my life, I probably avoided things like getting my license or having mm-hmm. a doctor if I could. And, you know, pretty much anything official just to avoid, yeah, the discomfort around it. We don't yeah. have a third sex on our ID in BC for driver's no. licenses or health care. I'm pretty sure it's available for passport, but it's not very good if it doesn't match your other ID. So, yeah. So it was interesting. And also as being someone who's had my learners for, you know, 20 years, it was actually pretty fun because I sat there all day on standby the day I got it and watched a lot of 16 year olds. Like some of them (laughs) really happy and some of them broke down and screamed and it was very dramatic and kind of fun. So I might be one of those 16 year olds. (laughs) You'll be like, (laughs) (laughs) one of them kid was like, I'm never driving again. I was like, like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm kind of glad that I'm 37 and I just like, I can take it. I can roll with the punch. (laughs) (laughs) i've come this far yeah yeah totally nice oh i should also mention um i've got my friend maddie marms uh as an audience in with me today hi everyone (laughs) nice to meet you nice to meet you too i've been sitting here resonating so hard with the you know driving license sagas i feel Mm -hmm. the same i was a little older when i got my G mm-hmm. and um, also felt super terrified to drive on the 401. Mm. Tackled it, feel good, but like super dramatic. Service Canada locations all over the country, I know. or Service Ontario locations like they that would be an interesting reality television show. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> just hanging out there. Yeah, yeah, really would be. Um, oh, something I'm interested in is also with the kind of like touring and road trip necessities. Like, do you have certain like snacks? pillows or music or certain things that are like must be on rotation we've been listening to a lot of Nicki Min- not Nicki Minaj sorry Janelle Monae <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. and uh sharing our music and Calgary Grayson the tech talked to me into getting a bluetooth car stereo uh so I went and took it in and <laughs> the car in and I got a new stereo so all of our phones can hook up to it so mm-hmm. oh sick I have uh, my own car pillow which yep. we only dropped once in the Sault Ste. Marie comfort in parking me. lot but <laughs> we've all collection. used it it's all good but yeah i don't know i mean we've been trying i am vegetarian so that's kind of interesting but we've been yeah. kind of traveling in our grayson's also non-binary so sort of a non-binary bubble which is new for me for touring and and yeah, yeah it kind of creates this like realm where we're getting the right pronouns and stuff and i think that's why we feel so fresh yeah Maybe. definitely yeah <laughs> also feeling fresh i saw like a like a stock of celery yeah. Seemed like a good way to <laughs> keep going. Yeah, I've been like, I think when I'm traveling, I try to just eat more like fresh produce, like mm-hmm. what I can, because I know that I'm like to balance it out, I'm going to be eating lots of like fast food stuff because you're just on yeah. the go and like whatever. So mm-hmm. Ray makes sure that I always have at least like one grocery stop every like four or five days <laughs> to get like more fruit. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I usually kind of like stick to like fresh bread, uh, Maybe some cheese, oh, apple, yeah. and just like rip hunks off the thread. Yeah. I just uh, eat anything. I'm built like a tank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm num num. <laughs> it's true, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really You're like, I'm like, whatever. Garburator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Um, so, what were some of your like favorite moments on this journey you have together? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I know, it's hard to choose. 
Um, we're like, we can't remember anything. Uh, uh, yeah, it's I'm all like a blur. so blank. It's like all nice, but I'm like blank. Um, mm-hmm. we, well, we plan on um, Jenny's, Mitchell's like golden bus uh, Monday, and we're playing there again tonight, which is like always fun. I yeah. love playing there, and it was Respectful Child's first time there. And, yeah. and Gan had matching like gold shoes on, which was like very <laughs> Yeah, special. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> it just happened to, ha- it was just meant to be, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I also saw, um, I saw, did you go to the, Star Trek Museum? Is that where you were? Oh, where it's, were you? it's in Vulcan, Alberta. Um, Vulcan Sick. was named before <laughs> Star Trek came out, but they've adopted the Star Trek thing. So there's a lot of like murals of the Enterprise floating over a, a grain elevator, kind yeah. of like <laughs> Alberta um, Star Trek montage. Yeah. Just like by the side of the road. Yeah. And there's a museum, but it, it was wasn't closed, open yeah. that it's day. It's kind of awkward. You, oh. you can put like a Star Trek uniform on over your clothes, but then it's all lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did that already. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we've been, I've been trying to, like, hit all the hot spots for uh, yeah. the two uh, folks who are r- from Alberta. So, yeah. yeah, Vulcan and the Donut Mill and Red Deer. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. Are, are you all Trekkies, or? No. No? I, okay. I, know. I think Grayson is, though. Oh, Grayson maybe, knows. yeah, yeah. I know things about Star Trek. I mm-hmm. watched it when I was really little, but don't remember enough from... <laughs> that age <laughs> yeah yeah like i've i've watched one episode that, that i can oh. be proud of <laughs> like, oh. I've watched oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> sigh of disappointment <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, star it. trek or star wars i watch both of them but i only watch star wars because i hate christmas and so i go there every christmas <laughs> There's always Aww. a new Star Wars film, so we just call Star Wars Christmas. <laughs> and then we call Christmas Star Wars. I'm like, it's almost Star Wars. And then we go watch Star Wars, and then it's over. <laughs> That's kind of true, at least, yeah. for the like, we, last <laughs> installment of the franchise. Exactly. And we always play Xbox, so I sing Christmas carols, but I take Jesus out and sing Xbox. <laughs> like a little Xbox in the manger. Yeah. It's always good around our house at that time of year. <laughs> nice. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so how do you two feel? Do you want to do you want to play some more think, music for I us? think we're doing like back and forth like we did a Ray Spoon song and then now I'm going to sink down and hide and respectful child's going to play a song. Oh. Yeah. So exciting. Kay. All right. Here I go down the stairs. Uh, Here we go. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh I guess I'll I'll play some of the stuff off like the album I got to release on Ray's label last year, Coax Records, which is uh the album's called Searching. So, um Searching. Yeah. It's cuz kind of like I uh, I feel like there's just like so many questions in my life that I was like I don't know the answers to and then like mm-hmm. my music was just me being like I'm curious and don't know what really what I'm doing but like trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um. So That's great. this one's called Wonder. Am I, am I on this time? <laughs> I realized as we started the first song that my my volume was all the way down. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. got it figured out. Okay. Good. Thank you. 
Oh, Hello. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I almost fell asleep there downstairs. That was it's very relaxing. Down in so the nice. In our cellar. <laughs> yeah. I like your description as a uh, underwater underwater <laughs> violin. That's definitely yeah. how I felt. <laughs> That's the easiest way to go about it if I don't want to have like a full biography. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you said that you released this off of your record searching last year on on Coke's records? Yeah, yeah. I um I like had this serendipitous meeting with Ray like in 2015 where I just got to open for them in, at, at a festival in Saskatoon and and then they remembered me um and uh-huh. uh and then when they came through with their last album release they were like let's play a show together and then kind of like real casually afterwards was like if you ever want to release on cokes and I was like ah! uh-huh. <laughs> and then like a year and a half later I was like I finally have something <laughs> yeah and I was like don't pressure them they're taking their time yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just sent like a nice email and then like it was like okay cool there's nothing yet that's fine <laughs> yeah I just leave musicians alone sometimes it takes years but they usually come back <laughs> yeah you just gotta like give them that space to be able mm-hmm. to kind of access what they need to do yeah for sure. um, <laughs> I think that's a wonderful wonderful strategy yeah yeah and um isn't it wonderful those kind of connections that you make with people and mm-hmm. then over time kind of lead you to the to the person that you want to be yeah yeah <laughs> for sure it's absolutely wonderful yeah a really quick question um just about your process for folks who aren't in the studio today um i'm observing you using your instrument in many different ways <laughs> that might not seem um, traditional or what folks are used to yeah. and if you would be willing just to describe what you were actually doing with your instrument to folks who are listening because I found it super cool <laughs> and also so much cooler because of the sounds that were coming out of your instrument. Yeah. <laughs> well uh, yeah so I play a violin which I've been playing since I was like four years old but that was all really classically trained and I was really hesitant about like even plugging it in to to wires <laughs> like, yeah. before I even knew all the terms um so I just a- kind of threw out to my friends I was like anybody have pedals they want to get rid of I'll buy them off of you and play around with them and that's basically what I have now and so the one that I play with the most is a delay which gives that kind of like echoing effect and yeah. and I play with the timing of that um like rhythmically in my music um so I like pits which or pluck my my violin a lot to like get like different notes that come out and then like play with the timing of when when I play the next one that sort of thing and then I found out that I could also kind of like use my pickup on my violin as a microphone mm-hmm. that um, was so cool. yeah like we we me and my friend discovered that by accident where Sick. they were just like come jam now that you have pedals and then they would always make me <laughs> laugh and then you'd hear like ha 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 and then like ha 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 in like the amp and my Aww. friend got so excited he like ran around the room and like just started picking up like cymbals and things and just like clacking them near my violin and stuff and so we were like oh look we can like make sounds with it so mm-hmm. yeah it's been fun to experiment with that ever since <laughs> sweet thanks yeah. yeah you know pedals are lovely for that i um i got uh the classic like dl4 and um <laughs> at the same time uh, uh do you know buns no i don't mm-hmm. it's like kind of oh wait the buns trading yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 okay never mind i thought you were thinking buns as like a band or a <laughs> pedal oh, it will be, oh, buns be Yo, great yes good call it will be yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely um, but basically around the same time that I got the DL4, I, uh, traded, um, Magic the Gathering cards for, uh, a mandolin. Nice. <laughs> so I found that, like, putting the mandolin through the pedal, like, it just, like, it just allows for so many different things you wouldn't normally think mm-hmm, of. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, no, it, it's really cool, um, realizing that you don't have to stick to the rules that were made before you. Yeah, um, it's actually really freeing. <laughs> it's so free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had saw I had seen an interview that um, you were you were talking about your experience playing other people's songs and then making yeah. the switch to yeah, playing yeah, yeah. your own music. Yeah, it's way less nerve wracking because so um, like uh. <laughs> I had, like, taken jazz classes on, like, how to improvise, and they, like, gave you, like, all these tips, but really you don't figure it out until you just, like, kind of free yourself to be, like, Mm -hmm. you can make up whatever you want, and that's, like, that's 
all of that's valid. So it's kind、mm-hmm. of like now I'm like, I'm only playing my music. So if I mess up, actually, nobody knows. I just do whatever I want with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have to feel like I'm not living up to some standard, like some composer or some person's idea of what it's supposed to sound like.、Mm-hmm. It's just my own. <laughs> Would you say that you could do whatever the heck you want? <laughs> yep. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> I do do whatever the heck I want with this. <laughs> Wonderful.、Um, and with that, I think that's, a,、uh, I guess, a, an appropriate enough springboard for. Oh, yeah. Should we play that song? Should we do our, our slower song?、Uh, what、you、are you also... feeling like? It's whatever you feel like, yeah. Okay, wait. I have to switch our background. There we go. Yeah. I've been VJing. I'm VJing <laughs> with my foot right now. Right. Okay. And. Oh, sorry, I was going to say just on that note that if anyone wants to see these VJing visuals, you can go to、um, our YouTube channel at CFRU 93.3 FM.、Uh, you can tune in there and see all of the, the neat in,、um, visuals that、uh, Ray created themselves. It's,、uh, it's really good.、Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, we'll play this song. It's called It's Not in My Body, and it's a non binary adult contemporary hit in Red Deer, Alberta. And a sing along. <laughs> and a sing along. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> It's not in my body. The answers you want from me. Yes, I am my body. But you try to turn it on me. I just want to travel in this ship without answering for. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, for everyone at home, you're listening to CFRU 93.3 FM, and、uh, what you've just heard is Ray Spoon playing their、uh, <laughs> hit adult contemporary non binary <laughs> song. It's a song、uh, for everyone who has a body. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> It's not in my body, off of their new record, Bodies of Water. Mm-hmm. Which just came out earlier this month. And、um, I have to say, it, it really plays masterfully with like tension and, and relaxation 
Um, so, so please, please, please do yourselves a favor at home and uh, give it a spin, folks. Um, so, so with that album, there's like a lot of themes of like crises and flooding, a calling out of like defunct attitudes towards gender and accessibility in the environment, um, both on behalf of the government and communities at large. Would you like to kind of um, speak on that point? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, many years of being out as trans, about 17 or maybe more, I don't really remember, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's a long time to not have a gender designation that fits me or a change room for me or a bathroom yeah. or a... Yeah, or a, a daily interaction that's comfortable 99% <laughs> of the time. So so I think that, you know, the way that I see that is as governments change how they legislate gender, there is more space happening um, for people. You know, it doesn't happen for everyone right away, obviously, mm -hmm. based on privilege. People's the most pri most privileged get, you know, the yeah. rights first. Um, yeah. And yeah, but I think I started to realize that, uh, you know, thinking a lot about being a settler and seeing how we settlers have treated the land here yeah. in Canada, I think we treat the land a lot like we treat gender in this rigid structure that is used just to like further certain people's agendas and so mm -hmm. living on, on the the west coast very close to where you know a lot of pipeline protests are happening mm -hmm. and you know we're you know really trying to keep you know oil out of the ocean basically yeah. and yeah. and trying to support and, and um the yeah like indigenous <laughs> folks um stopping that pipeline uh I just think about it every day, um, how that's being legislated mm -hmm. in the same way that you, it's like, well, this is how it is, you know, but these rules that are just, you know, they can also yeah. change them. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they could just not build, build the pipeline. They mm -hmm. could just say, yeah. we're not going to do oil sands anymore. We're going to do solar power in Alberta now. We're going to do, there's so much sun there. There's mm -hmm. so many skilled workers. Like you could just turn mm -hmm. it all around. Like remember when Iceland kicked everyone out in power? Like we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you could just turn it around. So it's kind of interesting to me. Like, and you could just not be a man or a woman yeah. if you didn't want. Yeah. So yeah. to me, you know, I think addressing those things at the same time is like really uh, timely for me where I live and who I am. Yeah, there there are two facets of like one malicious machine. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Really. Mm -hmm. um, and Gan, do you want do you want to speak on on uh, on that as well? I feel kind of like play. Ray does a very good job. <laughs> Gan does instrumental music. Okay. You, you can also do accompaniment Gan, while we Gan speak about shy. it. You know, works. <laughs> Gan doesn't hear the lyrics when they're playing. There's like a certain kind of musician they don't hear lyrics when they're playing. Like you know some of the lyrics. Yeah, like if some you're of listening, them. But, but, but you're feeling. It takes a lot. You're all feelings. You're yeah. all the the tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> Am I, I'm just talking accurate. for you now. That's like a. Anyway. Yeah. Maybe I should just go back to my spot and let you play a okay. song. Okay. I'm going to stop talking and again can say whatever they want without my help. <laughs> well, it is interesting what you said, though, Ray. Like, um, there are um, come back, people. Come back. <laughs> You're just like sitting down there in the basement. Come That's back. cool. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, it, it is interesting how um, there's um, artists. I won't, I won't try to universalize artists en masse, but um, it's very common for the experience to be the the music is prior to the the words and the concepts that kind of arise and so before you can you know form words and stuff like that you have a melody that can kind of draw these feelings and mm -hmm. thoughts out yeah um well like i guess for me i don't try to like um i don't try to use my music to like fulfill some sort of agenda i feel like yeah. the music like speaks for itself first and then it but it always will for me it'll like reflect whatever whatever place i'm at you know and what yeah. whatever place like our society is at so yeah uh, yeah like it makes sense that an album like rays would have so much yeah tension and, and, mm, and then mm -hmm. it, because that's like the times that we're living in and like you can't avoid that <laughs> yeah and like forgive me if i'm getting into too bleak of territory here but do you ever find yourself like lying awake at night with these issues <laughs> oh yeah oh, oh yeah of course because <laughs> it's like <laughs> You get, we think about them and talk about them, but we realize that they're like they're still happening. Yeah. No matter, like mm -hmm. they kind of like are self perpetuating in a way, yeah. and we're like trying to find ways to cut that cycle. But it can it can get really exhausting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, when the smoke was in BC and um, being in Prince George, when you haven't seen the sun in a month, mm -hmm. you know, like we got very heartbroken where we were living when you're just seeing this like orange sun mm -hmm. can't see anything we go to the ocean and you could just see like barely you know it's very apocalyptic mm -hmm. and it's um yeah it's like we need to stop now <laughs> yeah you know like <laughs> it's like very heartbreaking and mm -hmm. but i i actually decided like you know for a while it's like oh, okay the world's done you know mm -hmm. it feels like that but then i realized that that's actually what 
folks in power want us to think. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want us to think that it's over and it's mm -hmm. not over. Mm -hmm. We could stop it. Yeah. We could just stop it. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's like we could, we could actually. Yeah. Um, so and they could, you know. They could also stop. And then like <laughs> us, like all this austerity and stuff, it's not real. It's mm -hmm. all, you know, so <gasps> yeah. Oh, it's ZB1. <laughs> they, <woke up. laughs> they found us. Hi ZB. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I mean that's maybe I'm just a dreamer, but I'm like, why? Why, you know, I'm always the person who's like, why? <laughs> why are, why don't we stop? You know, you can actually do it. Yeah. The thing is, and yeah. actually, there's not a lot in it for young people, like with what's going on with the rents and the prices going up. I think we're going to see voting change. And yeah. so that's why there's such a rush to, tr to like cheat voting now mm -hmm. and to change the lines. Because, you know, but eventually I'm not saying that all older folks vote conservative but i think there's gonna be a big change in that mm -hmm. and that we can the people i see who are coming of age now are like mm -hmm. we can actually vote in folks who are gonna mm -hmm. yeah. give something to people you know living yeah. the living wage the minimum yeah. income yeah you know if i may inter like just to reflect back because what i was gonna ask a question um kind of based off of like i think all four of us are kind of in that mindset of like holy crapola like <laughs> things are really bad this is a uh a, re a real moment and it's coming out in all a lot of things right folks behavior natural occurrences in culture and government <laughs> um what do we do like what do we do about it um you know ray you said that you know you're a dreamer but and so I was going to ask, okay, as a dreamer, what do you do? What do we do? But then you just, you answered that, mm -hmm. right? You were, you know, young folks. Like you, 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 you were seeing that, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were mm -hmm. seeing that, you know, things will change. Folks yeah. are shifting. There is an evolution in human behavior and, it, and we're observing it, right? Like mm -hmm. we are crafting a generation that mm -hmm. doesn't feel safe in urban centers, even though that's where we were moving to and gravitating to mm -hmm. for so long, because that's where we thought it was, whatever it is, culture, mm -hmm. other yeah, people our age, connection, mm -hmm. community. And at least, you know, coming from my perspective, I just moved to a prairie rural community here in Guelph out of downtown Toronto for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting for me looking at just like, what's going on politically, understanding, you know, we're in a municipal uh, election here. Toronto is in one. My goodness, mm -hmm. is it one? Um, what's happening? Like, mm -hmm. where are the young people? Where are they voting? Why are they voting? Yeah. I find it interesting to hear you, you, you folks speak about it because you're located, you're centered in Prince George, right? Is that I live in uh, on la, la, the traditional territories of the Kwangan speaking peoples yeah. in, uh, in Victoria. Mm -hmm. Victoria. And Gans from Treaty 6, yeah. Saskatoon. So, right. yeah, we're both from these like different places. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, um, I don't know if this like directly answers your question, but I think w what's really important that has to keep happening is like a lot of like unrecognized work that seems like can be can s seem so tedious every day like the people who are like teaching and the people who are like on twitter and on doing blogs and you know yeah. like engaging in conversations like that that aren't recognized as like these big game changers and these mm -hmm. big leaders but like it's actually like the little like constant pushing back mm -hmm. totally. that that has to keep happening because it's like it's like about changing mindsets and changing people's yeah. concepts of like what our living is supposed to be like that's like the thing that often gets kind of like pushed to the side or like forgotten in a way and it can be so exhausting because it goes so unsupported and unrecognized but I think that's like some of the most important stuff that I see happening is like the people yeah. that like don't give up <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. Of changing <laughs> the way we value labor and like yeah. who's doing the labor of changing yeah. people's like uh making safer spaces for folks are trying mm. to which and is what yeah. you've been doing like i try i mean you've just been like doing your thing i was and, just like, doing it for spaces. me like exactly. i wrote this i wrote some propaganda like gender <laughs> filler i was like no. <laughs> no but i mean i think every artist you're always hoping to make make the thing you don't see in the world like i remember jeremy yeah. dutcher just said that like i came out in this outfit because i wanted to see the body i never saw growing up yeah. like i want to see this body represented yeah. so i think we're all doing that in the way we can and uh mm -hmm. yeah i so. think that's yeah like very well said especially what you're getting at gan like when we're talking about human behavior it's not 
one huge change that happens and it, yeah. it remedies the situation. It is constant resistance and it's constant pushing back on these tendencies yeah. to change habits over time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tend to look at ethics as this kind of make or break thing, um, <laughs> but really it's it's just about embodiment and embodying habits that respect each other mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. respect um, the world. Yeah. Respect the very <laughs> land right. we're living on. Yeah, and it happens a lot on a personal level. I mean, for yeah. me, I'm just like, if I don't understand something right away, like, I just think, if I came upon something, I go, I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, well, I'm just going to do it anyway, because I'm going to hurt someone. So what is it to me mm-hmm. to yeah. change my language? And then maybe my brain catches up and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, that was mm-hmm. this is why we're doing this, you know? And so mm-hmm. for things that I don't experience, I just kind of step back and try to listen more to people's you know what's going mm-hmm. on with that and and also acknowledging privilege that i have and trying to do that yeah. labor mm-hmm. for people who you know have less privilege and are being yeah. yeah and kind of like knowing when to step in and and where i should be mm-hmm. standing up for stuff and where i don't have to yeah <laughs> so <laughs> yeah totally that's one thing that really got me um in philosophy i had some of my cohorts like trying to talk about as if privilege was like a monolithic thing that it was Mm -hmm. just kind of one thing but it's it's really not it's like a whole set of different experiences that are open to some people and closed to others Mm -hmm. on the basis of arbitrary like it's very dynamic right depends on it's all relative in a way too like Mm -hmm. what situation or relationships you're in yeah that that privilege is different in in all of these systems and Mm -hmm. you have to be be able to like constantly evaluate yourself to be like oh what position am i in in this room right now yeah Mm -hmm. what how does that affect how i like interact or or don't (laughs) yeah it's it's definitely something i'm i'm i try to be very um conscious of as an interviewer because you're you're put in this position where you need to kind of like you're asking questions about people's lives and you have to make sure that you're asking um respectfully and that you're um leaving space for that person to show to show who they are mm-hmm. if they want or mm-hmm. you know or not it's it's really up to them mm-hmm. um but yeah like I, i'm really enjoying uh really enjoying this talk i find that uh, <laughs> this is very <laughs> We're very revelatory. I'm surprised. I thought I was pretty brain dead from all of, like the driving. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, well, well, there's still things in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I often find if I just go, I'm gonna sit down, stop talking, then the shy person will be like, and then they'll start talking if you make a little space. <laughs> and, and that's all exactly. And there you go. <laughs> just a little adjustment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, are we gonna play a respectful child song? What? Next? How much time do we have? We got, we got time. Yeah, we, we time. got time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's let's hear a, resp- a respectful child song. And um, yeah, for you folks at home, you're listening to uh, CFRU ninety three point three FM, and uh, yeah, we're just about to listen to some sweet tunes. Um, I'm like trying to. S- I think I'll, I think I'll play a song called "Float," which is very, uh, starts very like small and spacious and grows a lot. Um, yeah. Love it. Love <laughs> it. Okay.
Thank you so much. That was wonderful soundscape for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to go along with like our I don't know end of the world kind of talk or something. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, sitting out on your balcony, watching like <laughs> the waves. <laughs> yeah, kind of like rise up, coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was really good. Um, now, and, and on the end of the world kind of note, uh, <laughs> I wanted to know kind of like, do you have any, any practices um, to kind of like not dismiss the tension of these issues, but to kind of embody them without exhausting yourself physically and emotionally? Um, you um, know, you know, music's a, like a great humor. example. Yeah. Humor. I used to make a joke about how, no. Okay. My joke is that uh, <laughs> it's about... Um, being trans that there's no surgery to get a sense of humor and that like you'll get <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble if you don't have one <laughs> because <laughs> it's kind of just like an unending kind of like funny thing that's, yeah that's really good <laughs> anyway that's always my opening line at a conference for that so, <laughs> hey like you're screwed you're not <laughs> funny <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have a sense of humor then you're just gonna cry yeah <laughs> um yeah but i think we like laugh a lot and yeah you can learn a lot by meeting lots of different people, which has been really cool on tour. Yeah. Like we played in, uh, you know, Thunder Bay. Uh, we played in Winnipeg, like kind of all the way out. We played in Prince George actually on the way and mm -hmm. with lots of different folks like playing with us, some mm -hmm. certain people at the bill. And yeah, yeah. I'm really it. lucky. I f like being on tour with Ray means I always feel comfortable of every like space I'm going into. Like I can trust what kind of crowd and like people we're working with kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I think, yeah, just, I think realizing who I s who I spend my time with has been like a really good form of self care. Yeah, which is is hard. It's like hard to know who you choose. <laughs> um, totally. But I I. I I think early on when when I was like younger and I started learning about how like messed up the world was I was like oh we got to do things and then you just like exhaust yourself because like you try to do too much and, yeah. and it's like so so depressing in a way so mm -hmm. learning to like actually pull back and like know how much you can take on and who's what's worth spending time on and who's worth spending time with kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really good advice for sure. Yeah. yeah, I think you could only replace like bad experiences with good experiences. Mm -hmm. You can't actually erase bad ones. So, mm -hmm. you know, whenever we have a bad experience, then we're like, let's go mm -hmm. have a co let's, let's <laughs> go have a candy apple. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, and like, you know, or whatever. I think, you know, growing up in the kind of family I grew up in, I've learned about like retraining. The only way I can make myself feel safe is to like have safe experiences and that that takes yeah. a long time. Yeah to you have mm -hmm. your brain running those different pathways so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's just being kind to yourself and people around you and totally. you know trying to remember when your buddies might be a bit stressed out and you know yeah. mm -hmm. and hanging in there for them too mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah yeah it definitely takes a kind of um patience to realize that these things take time that they're not going to be instantaneous things yeah um as well to as have fun still have too. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Like still not feeling yeah, like being like, Oh, there's all this other stuff, but there's still things that I enjoy for no reason other than I just enjoy them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um I have a bad habit myself personally of, of picking up many different things that I enjoy, but mm -hmm. then I get sometimes I get too serious about them. Mm -hmm. And and, mm -hmm. and I say I have to be the best <laughs> blank ever. Yeah. And then I end up <laughs> Like one time I was, so I'm a film photographer, so I was, I was scanning some film. My partner says to me, you know, you do these things because you enjoy them, right? I'm like, but this picture's not, didn't turn out or this. <laughs> it's like, you can just enjoy it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have like a solemn agreement with myself that if I stopped liking playing shows, I would just quit because yeah. mm -hmm. it's not like you're getting paid in anything else. But yeah. you know, <laughs> so that's most of your pay is yeah. that you're like doing what you want to do and having fun. Yeah, so yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely some valuable work that you do, Ray, in like creating these spaces. It's 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 wonderful. It's definitely like it's um interesting to go over like twenty years of shows and then watch 
those things change and also watch like the things I'm aware of change you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't aware when I first came out um you know came out to Vancouver I wasn't aware of how super racist the white queer community was and like and I mm. probably was like being there I thought that there was only one queer community <laughs> in Vancouver and I found out later that there were many other ones that just didn't want to hang out with us <laughs> and oh. so when I kind of figured that out and in every city's like that there's many different queer communities mm -hmm. and uh folks who aren't com like you know very comfortable in like white dominated spaces will make their own spaces so um yeah I think it's a good thing to keep in mind about queer culture uh, that mm -hmm. it's it is also like very white dominated and yeah. and um and yeah, just like trying to, I don't know. But also at the same time, I, uh, my friend Rose from LOL, she says, I don't want to go to any party that all my friends can't go to. So I think it's about <laughs> making a place where anyone could go, but that's also safer for, mo like for other folks. So mm -hmm. trying to find that and by listening, not by talking most of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. That's wonderful. Um, how did you feel, Ray? Did you want to, did you want to? Should we do the, we'll the do the theme song. Oh, Is that me? The theme song. I don't know if that's you. Am I groaning? There you go. <laughs> is it me? This is a... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it could be me. Okay, so this song's called Do Whatever the Heck You Want. We're going to do the heck version because we're on the radio and we want this station to stay on the radio Hooray. so that we can talk about all our alternative opinions <laughs> without getting shut down. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do that with certain language. <laughs> Should I be a man or a woman? What does that really mean? Should I be outside of it or something in between? sing do whatever the heck you want do whatever the heck you want don't tell anyone what the heck to do do whatever the heck you want should i date men and or women and or non-binary like me should i Three point three CFRU FM. We've just heard "Do Whatever the Heck You Want" by Ray Spoon. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, the current administration, uh, one thing, I've, one idea I've been bouncing off of other people, and I kind of would really like to start doing it, is to perhaps we could like send limericks <laughs> to him, just mm -hmm. like critiquing his whatever disaster he's engaged in at the time, just like 
<laughs> a weekly limerick. Nice. You know, like we have a the Soji protests happening out in uh, British Columbia near my house at the legislature. A lot of um, families are like, whatever. Some of them don't even have kids, but they show up and they're like, we don't want them to get like sexuality and gender education. Ugh. But my my response to that is like, I was pulled out of evolution in biology. I sat uh-huh. in the library. I never had sex ed. And now look at me. So <laughs> you can try, but not, you know, it's, it sucks, but you know, like you can pull youth out of all that and they're still going to turn out how they turn out. So yeah, totally. yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. So I grew up Catholic. Mm-hmm. Uh, our sex ed was, uh, um, the teacher put their, I think it was, they put their I'm trying to remember, I think they put their hand on the, on the blackboard and just did like a circle around the hand mm-hmm. and then did their finger on the blackboard and yeah. then trace their finger and was just like you see that you see this sperm here I, i'm just gonna do a voice to protect their identity you see this sperm here see how it can go through that hole that's a hole in a condom you don't have sex wow yeah that was the education i had <laughs> oh dear ours was different it was something like if it was an airplane it could go through the size of like a i don't know skyscraper i don't know something at my pentecostal youth group that's kind oh, of. I know. When was that? Oh, uh, 1993. Oh, okay, pre-9/11. Okay. Yeah. So. Pre-ni- oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh. So a little, I uh, guess, a little more sensitive. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. That's not good. No. They made it up, not me. <laughs> Ask them about their friends Adam and Steve who made that up. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. another part Adam of it. Adam and Steve. There yeah, that go. was great. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, look at yeah. us now in your face. In your face. Well, you know what. How about how about we end on a, a note of a note of love? Sure. Uh, yeah. Why not? Uh, so this question is is for Gan. Like I was a uh, I was perusing your your media and interviews and such, and I realized that you not only know the artist you want, but you're actually like in love. Is this true? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> they're, sitting, they're in the studio right now. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about you. Yeah, I guess yeah. you can't hear maybe because it's coming through the headphones. <laughs> no, I think they actually can hear. I think oh. they can hear through like the. I don't know. Monitors? This guy's on his laptop. Know. Maybe he can hear. Oh, yeah, he maybe. Hear. <laughs> I don't know. They're just looking at something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I was kind of interested in how kind of um, your relationship informs your music. I realize that music's a medium that it takes on, you know, yeah. a variety of influences. Yeah. But I was interested in kind of like if you kind of like jammed or if you kind of like we have tried a few times it's hard because we're we're really far away from each other i I feel far away (laughs) like a couple couple like provinces away or whatever um we've i I think the biggest influence i've had is just like seeing how they listen to music and how it's like so different from me like Mm -hmm. what what they're attentive to and what they pick up on like I, I almost feel like I'm like, oh, I, I have like, I need to go back and like re-listen to like, um, to how I was taking in music before because it's like I have a new set of ears now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they've introduced me to so much new music that I, I wouldn't have like listened to otherwise, maybe because like I wouldn't have thought I was interested in it or wouldn't have felt like it suited me. Um, and so that's all kind of like playing into just like how I explore sound and and stuff like that and and also like a lot of my music is based on just like feelings like Mm -hmm. just like creating feelings and and just like feelings of like missing someone or like loving someone Mm -hmm. or like feeling tension or any of that stuff is like coming out through like things that I'm making now and a lot of that's informed by <laughs> these feelings that these feelings that I have now, like of in this relationship. <laughs> Aw, well, that's so wonderful. Um, and we're we're getting to the end of the hour, unfortunately. Like we could, you know, we could do this all day, but mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, the show must go on yeah. to other shows. Um, I just wanted to thank you so so much for coming in today and playing your music and and sharing part of yourselves. Um, we just we really appreciate you coming in. We really appreciate all your hard work and that and that space you create in the world um and so i just wanted to say for you folks at home that uh if if you liked what you heard which you know i'm pretty sure you did um (laughs) they will be playing a a sold out show tonight at the golden bus but have upcoming dates in hamilton october 1st at the tower is that right Mm -hmm. um as well as october 2nd in kitchener at open sesame Mm -hmm. super exciting maybe i'll go there too um as well as many others so definitely check them out um definitely uh you know uh, I, w- I was wondering, kind of, could you tell them where they could find out your 
find your music or oh. there's Bandcamp. It's everywhere. Yeah. Bandcamp. All ZSPs. <laughs> yeah. Go on Instagram. Uh, Cokesrecords.com <laughs> is the record label site. And so there's a lot of other bands up there along with uh, Respectful Child and myself. So mm-hmm. it's awesome. a diverse label. We have like Klezmer. We're the Hufflepuff ambient. of labels. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. I decided on this. Yes. 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 I really was waiting for a Harry Potter <laughs> reference. We like Ray embraces all all of the outcasts. Oh, <laughs> We're a real hodgepodge. Yeah, it's great. That. That's <laughs> good. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, until next time, I'm Brady Patterson. Thanks for joining us and stay open and stay loving. Mm-hmm.